Hello there, this is Stephen Ball at Delphi Ball and in this video I'm going to be looking at uh, the whole end-to-end -end getting Swagger UI up and running but inside RAD server this time. Uh, so those of you who are familiar with my blog may know back in uh, 2016 um, I did a session, I ordered a blog post about uh, getting Swagger running in Delphi uh, through RAD server and discussed what YAML is um, which uh, is kind of a markup language that's used by the OpenAPI specification to allow you to define and document your uh, APIs and then make them easily uh, visible and understandable to other developers. Now, um, the uh, the great thing with the whole kind of uh, VAD server um, setup is that uh, by defining that you can then uh, produce the documentation automatically um, just by using a few attributes within the code. Um, the downside of uh, running uh, Swagger UI uh, in the browser outside of RAD server was that you then had to deal with this cross-origin resource sharing. Now that's relatively easy to get around by putting in uh, a plugin to your browser. Um, what I'm going to actually do is run it without um, the uh, the plugin um, and uh, you know you'll get a, an error uh, straight up as the first point um, that you're trying to do this cross-origin resource sharing unless you turn cross-origin resource sharing on um, within RAD server. Now if you do that then obviously it means that you open up a security vulnerability. Now, all right, admittedly this is just on our development machines um, but by mapping uh, and the setup and configuration um, we don't have to go through that option every time of just enabling cores as well uh, which just speeds up um, working with these kind of things. Okay, so let's um, let's get on and get it downloaded. Um, what we're going to cover in this session, um, we're downloading um, Swag UI, get it set up, get it running, um, get it configured within RAD server, within the ini file, um, and uh, also uh, just show the kind of the one change that um, I've made personally to my setup, which then just makes it a lot quicker and easier to run. Now to explain my configuration, I've got a, a Mac that I'm running here, a MacBook Pro, and then I've got a Windows VM. So the Windows VM is hosting RAD Server and RAD Studio, and then I'll be running the Swagger UI content directly from my Mac to show that we're remoting in and this is no, not running on the same machine directly. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and download Swagger UI. Okay, so let's uh, go to Google and search for Swagger UI. Now I could have just clicked the link in the slide deck, but uh, this is the, the way you, you'll be coming in, so let's just go that way. And use the download, and we just need the basic Swagger UI. Now this will redirect you through to GitHub, uh, where you can clone. I'm going to open it up in desktop. Um, I've got uh, GitHub desktop installed on my Mac, uh, which is quite useful. Uh, and then I'm just going to choose where I want to put that onto my local machine. So I've got a git directory. I'm just going to put the Swagger UI directly in there. Okay, so once this is downloaded, um, which takes about two minutes, I'll then uh, come back and we can take on from there. Okay, so Swag UI is downloaded. I'm just literally going to reveal that in Finder. And uh, here I can see that my files are there as a distribution folder, and there's an index file here. Now that's just opened up on an, another page here, so I'm just going to bring that down here. Uh, and we can see this is pointing to our, our local file. Um, what we need now is we can see this is pointing to some documentation online, uh, an example. Uh, of the, the pets API, um, which you can kind of try out. You can say, well, let's get pet one, execute that, and you can see you know the request that's been sent through and then what's been sent back. So we need to build our own uh, and get this working. So let's uh, go into our RAD server, uh, RAD Studio, and open up a new project, create RAD server instance. And I'm going to create a package with a resource here. Uh, we're going to build a really simple module, 
which is exposing a single data set. Uh, and then later on, I'll come back and we'll show you some more advanced documentation and uh, some master detail detail with multiple parameters um, being passed through uh, as a follow on to this. So I'm going to say this is a database endpoint and it's coming from this connection locally. I'm just going to expose the exam table. Now I could select multiples and we'll come back and put others on at a later point but I just want to do the one for now. And now we have our query which shows us the data being fetched and uh, we also have this property here or this component here uh, a TEMS data set resource. Now the data set resource allows this query which is linked to this data set um, to be mapped to list, get, put, post and delete. So I'm going to take the post, put and delete off for the moment. I want this to be read only uh, from this application. And uh, if we jump just behind, we can see that we've got a resource name which is defining the, uh, the exam resource here as being a resource that's available through the exam parameter. And then a uh, resource suffix that says to get to this EMS dataset resource use this exam. Uh, and in fact, I'm just going to take that out. I'm just going to say, I actually just go straight to exam and we'll go straight there. So uh, let's not worry about saving that for the moment. I'm just going to run that locally here. Uh, open in the local browser. And we can see we've got a RAD server running. And if we go to exam, Uh, we can see that we've got some stuff come back. Now uh, I'm just going to change that to exams, which is plural. Uh, let's just rerun that. That's great. Now if we want to really exa um, get exam number 352, we just need to go forward slash 352 and we have a single specific item. So that's working great. Uh, the documentation is part of our API and the API has two different format versions and this is all generated automatically for you so far and we're going to use the API doc uh, for the YAML part here. So if we come back over to our Swag UI and we try to run this through here, uh, first thing I need to do is just update my IP address to be that of my server which is running. And we can now see that we get this cause issue that's saying we're trying to execute something across a resource, uh, across origin resources. So um, this is where in the past we'd have used a plugin to kind of get around this. Um, what we're actually going to do now is show how to get this running without worrying about the plugins, um, which just makes makes things quicker and easier. You don't have to keep constantly coming up and messing around with cross origin resource sharing. And also it makes it just a little bit more secure. So to do that, what we're going to do, first step, is we're going to go back into our application here. And all we're going to do is go find the any file for our RAD server on our development machine. So under C, Users, Public, Documents, uh, Embarcadero, EMS, um, EMS being Enterprise Mobility Services, the original name for RAD server. Uh, in here, right at the bottom, you will find there's this server public paths. Now this is great, and um, this is added in specifically to support things like Accenture, XJS, uh, and being able to put web files and bits directly into the RAD server and use them, uh, and share kind of content directly out. Um, but you can actually do the same thing uh, with Swagger UI. So if you just use any arbitrary path name, it really doesn't matter. Um, what you know, the bit that matters is what's in the JSON data packet here. So the path is going to be swagger hyphen UI, and this is going to be pointing to Z source git swagger UI dist. So on my machine, um, I actually have a shared folder with my host, which is then source, and then we've got git um, swagger UI, and then we've got the distribution folder. Now the default is the index HTML, which is in here. Uh, and these are the file types that are allowed to be used and you can see here we've got different file types that are listed uh, and they map into what we've got in here. Now that's all been done for you already so you just need to literally just update the path and uncomment this. And uh, let's just make sure I saved that document. 
and let's go rerun. So that's not going to change the immediate issue here. You know, we're still not going to be able to do the cross-origin resource sharing. But what we can do is we can actually say, let's take this part here and go direct to our server uh, and then just go swagger hyphen UI. And there we are, we're running now Swagger UI directly through our server. Um, and if we uh, uh, go back to the, uh, get our endpoint back up, API YAML. We can now see our documentation is coming directly up, and if we come down, uh, we should have a default section in here somewhere. There we are, we can see we've got the exam and the exam IDs, so we can go try this out. We can execute, we can see that we're getting our exam data back um, directly into the UI here, which is great. Um, and if we go, let's do a get with a specific ID, and we can try this out. Now, the problem is we haven't actually got the ID um, marked up as a, a parameter here at the moment because um, we haven't actually defined it. So it's saying here, you know, we, we need a field at value for exam ID. So what we cover next is actually adding those attributes on to, to do that. Okay, so the documentation uh, for the TMS REST set resource uh, is the same as any other uh, resource that we want to expose. Uh, we're going to use the resource suffix again, um, but this time instead of just defining that we want it to go from the root uh, with the exams, we're actually going to define it to have uh, the list get, put and delete, uh, and we're going to actually define a name, the parameter, so we can use this to define the parameter that we're going to be passing in, um, so exam ID. Uh, now it's going to be important for us as we build up our master detail detail relationships um, through this example. Um, but also uh, it then kind of matches into the endpoint uh, request parameter attribute that I'm defining here that says this is a path attribute that we're using, so it's going to be part of the path. Um, it's called exam ID. Uh, and then there's some descriptive wording to go in here. So you know, it's for identifying a specific exam. Um, this is a data type of integer we're passing in. Uh, you can you know, pick out the same parts there. Um, and uh, and off we go. So let's just jump back to the idea. And uh, I've literally just to save time copied and pasted uh, those those points in. So we can now see that we've got uh, this is going to be listed under an exams section. So we've got the re uh, endpoint request summary. So this is a list of exams uh, providing application JSON and. Uh, and then the rest of the parameters set up. Uh, so I just need to make sure we're not duplicating that. Okay, good. So let's rerun my mask on. Let's go ahead and rerun. That uh, still got it already open, so let's just close and make sure we get in fresh instance with the updated parameters. Okay, so if we go back to the uh, web browser that I had running here earlier, going back to my Swagger UI, um, one thing I have done is I've um, bookmarked on my browser the URL from my local machine, my Windows machine, uh, just to save me having to type that in all the time. Um, the only thing I do need to do, however, is to update the, the path that we're going to. And we'll get around that in a moment because that is quite annoying. So API API doc yaml was and that that just singular. And uh, we'll now be able to see that, uh, uh, where is it? 
There we are. We now have an exam section, and instead of just having a default ID, we actually have named parameters. Uh, we'll be able to see here that uh, we can still execute and try out. Um, although I've marked this as being a, an optional path parameter, um, just to kind of get around needing it sometimes and not others uh, in the UI. So if we put down exam one, because I know there's an exam one, we can then see the data coming back. So we're getting there. We are slowly getting there. Um, next, we're going to have to look at putting our detail and detail relationship in. Um, but before we do that, uh, just a, a quick way to sort out this uh, this path part here um, is to actually go and just do a search replace for pet store um, swagger JSON in the in the actual original file. So I'm literally just going to go and do that. So under the source where we have the swag UI and the distribution because that's the file that we're linking to. Uh, I'm just going to go and open that here locally on uh, my local machine. I'll just use Visual Studio Code just because it's a slightly nicer text editor on the Mac. And how we can just get rid of that. And that should be enough. Just hitting save. And if we refresh that page now. Yeah, we can now see that it's coming up directly with the API documentation, which just saves another few uh, clicks along the way. Okay, so just to wrap up then, um, in this video we've been looking at getting Swagger UI running inside RAD server, which we've managed to do. Uh, we've managed to get it downloaded from online. We've used the web files within RAD server in the EMS server any file to set up this server public path to then make it easy to access uh, Swagger UI directly as a parameter of our RAD server which gets around the whole cross-origin resource sharing um, challenges. We've also been able to update the index HTML for Swag UI locally on our machine just to automatically load up the documentation through the API path. And we've also been able to set up using the EMS dataset resource the, uh, op, uh, the parameters and define and name them uh, for use, um, which means we've got much cleaner and easier to read documentation. I'll say in the next video I'll be looking at expanding the uh, resource parameters and building in some master detail detail relationships um, just to to finish off this session. So thanks very much, happy coding and see you all next time.